Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP. Welcome back to another episode in my UAB Blazers playthrough with college uh, Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020. So we're down to the final eight games of this season, my second season with UAB, my eighth season now with this game. Uh, I'm, I'm determined to, to figure it out. I'm determined to figure it out, get better at it, start winning, but... If you if you got a chance to see that last episode, you'll know I'm I'm feeling a little down right now because this team started out six and zero with wins on the road against Louisville, convincing wins on the road against Louisville, Tennessee Tech, um, you know UMass for what it's worth. We're, we were playing just so well. I thought you know we might even be looking at uh, some attention in the polls with that kind of start. And then I should have been more alarmed, I think, than I was. But we started losing to some good and, you know, I guess middle-of-the-road type competition. Finished 7-4 and four in the non-conference schedule. Still thought, okay, that's fine. We're much better shaped than we were last year. We're going to be competitive in this conference and that's turned out to not be the case. Uh, we have been really, really struggling in the conference, three and seven. Whereas last year we were eleven and seven, and included in that three and you know in that three and seven, and now a ten and eleven overall record was a four-game losing streak. Uh, we lost in the conference. We went through a period where we lost seven out of eight, and that really put us in a hole. If there's any positives I can find, um, with eight games remaining, five are going to be at home. It looks like, for the most part, we've still got some tough competition coming up. Southern Miss, Old Dominion, for instance. Louisiana Tech on the road. North Texas on the road. Those could be tough. Middle Ten- I think they all could be tough at this point with their record. But for what it's worth, I do think we got through the roughest part of our conference schedule early. I'm just hoping we can we can – turn it around. Um, but I'm, I'm still hopeful because we've got a great recruit, recruiting class lining up uh, for next season. I mean, two guys, for instance, point guard and uh, small forward, which we've definitely struggled with. These two guys are l- literally top, Marquez Campbell, top 10 regionally as a point guard. He's coming from out of state too, coming from South Carolina. Jones, in state, he is number eight regionally at small forward. Um, we got Miller here, who's uh, a shooting guard with some great overall ratings. Typic- well, two things that make me um, pretty uh, happy with with his signing. He's a B overall, which at this level, I've struggled to get guys who are above C overall, for instance, in, in the skill ratings categories, but. He's A and an outside shooting B in scoring. Uh, we're not really where we need to be with the shooting guards right now. And I think where the strengths are, if, you, if you've been watching this, it's, it's definitely inside. We're scoring most of our points in the paint. It's these two guys, Dave Horton, a really good power forward, uh, having a great season. And Ryan Y, our senior uh, or sophomore center, those are the two best players on the team. They're pretty much carrying the team, um, honestly. So if we get some better guard play next year, I think we'll we'll be able to turn it around at least in the short term. And we're you know we're after that start uh, where we, gosh, what were we in conference like two and seven maybe we're three and seven right now. I think we were two and s- we've won the two out of the last three. So we were literally one and six in conference to start. Um, I did some changes, said, hey, let's just go with the young guys and change the depth charts around so that Rose, for instance, is no longer the starting uh, shooting guard. I've gone with the freshman recruit that I picked up this season. And Harris um, is still getting the start at small four. He's another senior, but he's pretty much dividing his time with um, Martin, 
small forward freshman recruit uh, I got into this year. I'm, I'm just hoping that these guys will get enough playing time that their uh, that their ratings improve over the uh, off season. But I don't want to completely give up on this year. But I, I feel like it's it's almost impossible to get what we need going um, with these eight games remaining. But we don't want to finish last, finish about 500. I think, you know, last year we made one of the four goals that they gave us, which was don't finish last in conference. Technically, we're not last now. If we get a few, well, if you just look at the overall records, right? If we get a few wins down the stretch, move closer to the middle of the pack, finish at 500 or better, um, I think we could salvage something. But it's going to be tough. So... Let's just, I guess that's enough set up. I'm hesitant, you know, to, to get it started, but we need to. So we're going to go ahead. First game, Middle Tennessee at home. They they were a good team in conference last year, so this could be a, a pretty tough one um, to win. It's taken a while to, to get to that game. Here we go. Um I just hope that we we're coming off a big win. I hope that we just start start playing great. Okay, so 11 11 and 11 overall now. 79-61 win, pretty convincingly. No surprise Dave Horton is um, going to be one of the top players in the game. But let's see how this one went in numbers wise. So uh, defense back looking solid in this one, held them under 40%. They didn't get a lot of free throws, so another good discipline game. They did out-rebound us, but by only one. Uh, we shot 56%, 50% from three-pointers, 88.9% uh, from the free throw line, so 16 for 18 there. Most of our points came in the paint. Horton, great line, 12 points, five rebounds, two steals, a block. Um, Harris, no points again. I, I can't believe how few points this guy has gotten as a starter he's had several games where he's not scored a point uh why didn't look too bad at center fisher six assists um six rebounds mccleary now that freshman getting the start at shooting guard and and looking pretty good um, for the most part he got 11 points here off the bench martin stewart trying to give him a lot of time he's a freshman point guard um it's a good play, good play up and down the line. Now, one of the things I haven't looked at, um, and I think I will right now, I, I haven't looked at it in a while, but the insights, basically one of the things I like looking at is this lineup tracking. It kind of gives you an idea of who's playing better as a team together. You can see... Um, I really feel... Um, it's really all over the place, to be honest. But they're they're really kind of going with this lineup, and I think as, as the best, these are kind of like the bench players. Um, so that's kind of scary to think about. But you know, we seem to be playing really well when these guys are out there on the floor. Um, and this is, for the most part, the starters that I have right now. Plus or minus is not too bad. Um, opponent shooting is, you know, especially in three-pointers, is pretty decent. But I'm surprised that, you know, they're wanting, um, they're saying, but, you know, I shouldn't be too surprised probably because, you know, we, we probably do have a little bit better bench play than a lot of teams we're playing right now. Um, that I'm trying to figure out, and I, I moved Grant McCleary into that starting point guard role. So this is, I'm not seeing, okay, so here's our starting lineup at the moment. The starting five, Fisher, McCleary, Harris, Horton, Y. Minutes 47. I mean, 
Defensively, we're probably not as strong with those guys out there. But I'm gonna I'm gonna keep riding that and see how see how it uh, plays out for the rest of the season. This is one that I can't I just can't uh, figure out. I'm thinking you know, okay, larger circles are probably the best, right? And and no surprise, it's Horton. Why? I think basically this is giving you in a graph chart form what you see right here in the pie uh, chart. But I haven't really been able to figure that one out. For me, I, I usually just look at that lineup tracking more than anything. Just kind of see if if there's an obvious um, sign that, you know, five guys are playing way better than, than another set of five guys. For this one, like I say, I think mainly what it's telling me now is that uh, the guys coming off the bench are outplaying, you know, who who they're uh, probably seeing when when they're coming off the bench. So I'm I'm guessing that the way I've got the depth chart set up, that uh, my reserves are coming out about the same time that the other teams putting their guys out there. So I hope that's what it means anyway. So now let's go ahead and finish this week up. So we've got seven games remaining. If we ran the table, um, that would be amazing. That would give us what we had last last season. But um, I hate that we put ourselves in, in that big of a hole after starting so good. So now we're going to be playing at North Texas. Uh, North Texas in conference are a little bit worse than we are but any team is, is dangerous on the road really uh, we do we manage a win and it was a good defensive win uh, which I'm glad to see too start to worry about you know if there was anything that was positive about this team in general from last season I thought it was our defense so I'd like to see that start picking back up not a lot of scoring I can see that already, but a win's a win. At this point, that's that's about all I'm really wanting. Um, so let's see what we got. Florida International, Southern Miss. Um, it'd be nice to have some guys show up on these kind of things too, like the Norton semifinalist and things like that. So let's take a look at the, uh, the box score of that one. I think that was the 11th. So, a really hard-fought win. Um, shooting was not too bad from us. We out-rebounded them. We really held them in, in check. I mean, 15 for 51. We were 23 for 51, so exact the same amount of, of field goal attempts. They went to the line the exact same amount of times and uh, didn't hit convert. And we held them, you know, when they probably got uh, a little anxious and started throwing up threes, we held them in check there. So... 30 points to 6 in the paint. Individually, Horton, player of the game, 8 rebounds, 7 points, um, a block, a turnover. Harris, believe it or not, one of his better games, 6 points, 4 rebounds. Why, uh, you know, 5 rebounds, 6 points? North Texas really did a pretty decent number on our offense. Grant McCleary, interestingly, actually had a plus 2. Um but again, it's the bench. You know, the bench is coming out and um, and doing really well. Matthews, ten points, plus twenty two, led the led all scoring. Uh, he's probably coming out and playing uh, mostly power forward. This is how I've got the depth chart going with him. He was uh, when I took over this team. He was the returning starting center, but I felt like I really felt like Daniels and Y were a little bit better. Yeah, so I've just got Matthews playing power forward. Some good bench play, though. That, that's uh, good to see, and I, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to tamper with that. I'm not going to make these guys starters just because they look to play uh, better. And some of you guys I know get a lot of good comments from some 
guys who've been playing this game as long or longer than I have, uh, you can might maybe f um, chime in here. But I, I think you have to have a good bench as well, and you know it's it's a it's a balancing act. You're going to have guys who are okay with it, and they're okay with playing their whole college career off the bench, and their attitudes are always good, their work ethics are good, and they come out and give you a, a, a line like Matthews did right here. Um, sometimes you need that. I mean, here's a guy who's a junior. He doesn't care about his play time, and he's really helping us out off the bench. He's more valuable to me coming off the bench than he would be if I were to try to put him at center with for Y or even try to start him over Horton, which is I can't see doing that. But um, I think that is – I'm trying, yeah, trying my best to take some positives away from this season, and that's – if nothing else, I think I can say that the bench has been playing pretty well for the most part. And hopefully I didn't jinx them. Jinx them in this next game. They'll they'll be the reason we lose. But it's nice to see 500 again. I mean, last year we were so upside down. We never got close down the second half of the season. So uh, with so what is six games remaining to be above 500, that feels good too. Now this one, this is going to be interesting. Uh, luckily, we're, we're going to be playing them at home. Texas San Antonio was one of the best teams in the conference last year. They made it to the NIT, I believe, made it to the NIT tournament um, as an invite and went very far in that tournament, I think went to the Final Four. So this would be, at this point, kind of a statement win if we could somehow win it, and we do, 91-77. So three three wins in a row, and we're starting to look a little bit better. Um, I still I still have to admit though we're not to the level of um, the conference that I was thinking we were going to be, but a pretty balanced uh, half to half here. A lot of points. Ryan Y leading with twenty three points, nine rebounds. A great game from him. Uh, we did a decent job. Shooting wise, defensively, um, looks like we out rebounded them a little bit 33 28. But the big thing, we went to the line 24 times, they went seven. That's something that another positive, one of the few positives I saw last year. Um, I think there's some discipline to this team, which is good to see. Individually, Horton, even though he wasn't player of the game, 20 points, six rebounds, a plus 25. Um, Harris, uh, He's just not a scorer, but you know his defense and rebounding was good enough that he contributed. Uh, why that may have been really his best game of the year, um, points wise. Yeah, that was his his season high. Maybe I wonder if that's his career high. Yeah, that was his career high for points. And then Fisher. Pretty decent, McCleary, 17 points. Um, I might have, you know, if, if he develops, I may have some trouble when it comes to shooting guard next year with this guy and the recruits that I'm bringing in. Uh, Stuart Wilson, look good off the bench. He's a he's a shooting guard, a red shirt sophomore. Um, he's certainly better than than I think Rose in potential. Uh, I don't think Rose was ever really that high potentially. He, he just, <clears throat> even though he got so much starting, and this is something um, that is is hard to figure out, really, what the magic is to, to this. Because here's a guy who started his whole career up until this year when I decided, hey, it's time to move on. He never developed. And um, so it's, you know, a commenter... Um, even made you know made this, I think either the last video I posted or one of the last few posted on my channel. It's like how how does it really um, work in terms of the ratings improvements year to year? 
I mean, is it based on your coaching? Is it based on the play time? It's just hard to say. I think a lot of it's probably based on the individual. Um, you see Rose here. Did he have uh, anything that would say well, his work ethic shows to be good? I, I just don't know. It's so it's such a mystery uh, why some guys don't develop. Um, but he never did. You can see he's still just a two-star player after that kind of play time and, and leaving as a senior, essentially getting benched. All right, so I guess I haven't really, I'm kind of, I guess I've just kind of let it go, but for what it's worth, 13 and 11 right now, we have equaled our number of wins uh, from last season in the regular season. So one more win and we, you know, we're, we're guaranteed more wins than we had last year in the regular season, if nothing else. And you can see the way it's, you know, with five games left now, we could, you know, we could technically finish with a losing record in conference and still have a winning record in overall. Um, but I really don't want to do that. I, I really want to try to claw my way back up to at least 500. This is going to be a tough one. This is probably one of the tougher games we've got remaining. Uh, Louisiana Tech tied with us record-wise in conference. It's a road game. And, yeah, we uh, just couldn't pull this one out. 81-76. McCleary, though, 20 points. Um, you know, good game from him. Why another good game? So back-to-back -back good games from those two guys. Looks like they held Horton down. That probably was the difference here in this one. So take a look here. Well, um, we shot well, 56%. The big thing, 51% from the free throw line. That's kind of uncharacteristic of us. We held them to 39% shooting. Um, we kind of flipped it, though. Uh, we, we got in foul trouble here, and they took advantage of it. Plus rebounding, 39-20-27. Uh, we didn't score a lot of points in the paint necessarily. Uh, and we're just not, you know, we're not going to be a team that's going to win it with three-pointers. You know, I don't know why Horton was shut down, but he was shut down. And uh, looks like they've got a pretty decent... And then Andre Whiteman, a, a pretty decent power forward as well, probably had the advantage over Horton. Harris, not a good game again. Again, zero points. Um, I don't know how you do that consistently. I mean, this is one, two, uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine games this year, he has failed to score a point. Whew. Luckily, he's, he's moving on. Uh, McCleary, though, again, a, a good outing from this guy. Um, you see how he stands there with outside shooting and free throw shooting, both potentially at eight. Good athleticism. I think he's going to have to get very close to this potential in, in scoring, uh, which is at seven right now, before I think he will be the best option at shooting guard. Um, say two, three, four years down the line. But I don't know. That's that's pretty good coming from a freshman to, to have that kind of performance. And I think, let me make sure if he was the one. I think he's the one who's not too concerned. Yeah, he's not too concerned with um, with starting time, whereas Martin, um, who's still, you know, he needs to develop quite a bit. He expects starter minutes, but his relationship's pretty good. I don't think I have a, a really bad relationship that's costing us with anyone on this team. Um, Harris, who's a senior, probably upset because he's not, you know, he's not starting. And then um, why, I'm not sure, unless he's having problems with other teammates. And then Anderson, I don't see much of a future for this guy. He was a red shirt um, center and he, he's not, I don't think he's gonna have a chance to, to meet, to do much for this team. 
All right, so now we got Western Kentucky, Old Dominion. I'm not going to look at those because I'm pretty sure we're going to be scouted to lose. Um, I just want to move ahead, see if we can bounce back from that loss. That was a, a tough one uh, to come in the middle of a pretty decent winning streak there. I think we're going to have to with these next four games. We're going to have to win one that we shouldn't or that we're not expected to win to have a chance at, at really finishing strong. I can't say really either what's disappointing me more. Um, the fact that we pretty much blew that opening lead or that, you know, we're not playing as well in the conference. Because I still, you know, I'm still happy that we got those six wins to start off. I don't, um, I don't really want to, you know, want to, um, lose that at the expense of having a decent season in conference. But uh, anyway, I, I think I'm just still trying to figure out how this season went went bad. But this is one of the tougher games we've got left. Southern Miss, luckily we got them at home. This is the only time we're seeing them this year. This would be a good solid win if we could somehow do it. And we do. 77-60, a very good win. Um, that's going to put us close to 500 in conference. That does – get us past last year's win record in, in regular season. So we've won 14 there this year. And this one, you know, when, when we win, it's it's here, you know. 21 of 63 shooting, 33 and a third uh, percent. Um, Out-rebounded them barely. Scored, almost doubled up the, the points in the paint. Horton had a great game again, bounced back after some pretty mediocre games. That's how we're winning. So uh, everything to me when we're winning, I, I feel like we're playing the the way we should be playing uh, in terms of the offensive sets. I got set up and the, the personnel out there. Um, so great, great win. Maybe if if we can handle the the remaining schedule, this might turn out to be one of the better wins down the stretch. Why double digits in points? Fisher, five assists, four rebounds, six points. A good a good showing from him. McCleary, uh, plus 14. You know, this guy's really, he's impressing me. I think uh, I'm, I'm really going to be uh, eager to see how his ratings are next year. Harris, two points. Wow. Off the bench, Martin, who uh, he's up to four points. He's definitely, he is outscoring so 15.8 minutes, he has four points per game. Um, Harris has 2.4 with 22 minutes a game. Whew. That's terrible. Um, outside of him, Daniels looked pretty decent off the bench. Stewart, if I didn't mention, he, he looked pretty good too. I think um, it's going to – I, I want to see – how his ratings progress too. I'm eager to see if he makes it makes a difference, but or sees a big difference. But so here we go back to the standings. Is that enough? Was that enough to move us up? We're close. So it's it's bunched up down here in the middle. Last year we finished with the fourth best record in the conference. Uh, this year you got UTEP running away, Old Dominion having a great season. Outside of them, I mean, we just beat Southern Miss. Um, Middle Tennessee is, is struggling. They're not playing as well as they did last year. Texas San Antonio is probably the biggest surprise, but that could have been last year that they just had a lot of seniors, um, you know, maturing and developing at the same time. And then North Texas, they've taken a big uh, dive this year as well. So with the games we've got left, four games left, or is it three? Let me double check. Uh, three games left. Florida International, Old Dominion, Western Kentucky. Two of, of the three are going to be at home. Uh, the Old Dominion one, of course, is going to be the 
right off just looking at it. I know that that's going to be the, the toughest one, but Florida International is having a good season too. So let's see if we, you know, we just beat a good team at home. Let's see if we can do it again. Now, one more win, you know, give us 15. So we'd be guaranteed 15 wins for the season. So we could finish the regular season off with a winning record. But we really wouldn't be guaranteed a winning record because if we go into that tournament and lose the first game, depending on the matchups in the Conference USA tournament, we finish at 500. So I really would like at this point to, to win two of these next three. And uh, it's going to be tough. I think we're going to have to win against Florida International. I don't – it would be a big upset, I think, for us to get past Old Dominion on the road. So this is the one. This is the one we need. Uh, and we do. We, we handle them pretty easily, 74-59. And once again, this is a good defensive showing. Why Horton Martin, wow, 17 points. So his averages are going to jump up a little bit in terms of uh, – and he just he suffered an injury. Uh, man, please tell me that's not – a. A big injury. Let me take a look at the, the score, uh, the, the box score first. I guess that was from 25th. Um, so defensively, everything looks good. I mean, they were 9 of 11 from the free throw line, but didn't go, you know, man, we're struggling at free throws. But defensively, it looks like we held them close in rebounds. 38 to 14 points in the paint. Uh, Ryan Y was the, once again, player of the game. I think that's, I don't know how many of that is this year, honestly, because he may have done a couple games last year, but five times this week he's been player of the game. One time player of the week. Scoring 12.4 points. Uh, very good to see. Horton, 13 points. He's he's the leading point point scorer on, on the team. Something I'll probably do at a later episode. I'll look at the, uh, how how the end of year stats went. Harris actually had a pretty good game here. Six points, four rebounds. Fisher, six assists. McCleary um, didn't score as much, but plus 23. Martin was the big guy. Um, and it looks like he's going to be 87% for the next 13 days. Um, Stewart, Rose, so I know he's not set to start, but I I may want to take a few few minutes away from him because I really don't want to see probably just right here. Um, it's not taking a lot away from him too, so I'm hoping that he can he can play. We'll see how this next game goes. All right, so. The big game's coming up next. Old Dominion on the road. If we somehow win that one, wow, that would be incredible. Um, so 15 and 12, now I want to win one of these next two because I feel like if we win one of the next two, we're going to finish above 500 for this season. Um, and that's, you know, after a great start, a rough middle with the conference schedule, that would be a good turnout. A good a good way to end up is if we finish with a, with a record above 500. I think that would make the board happy enough that I would get a little bit more leeway in terms of um, staying with this team. And it's going to be the best season this team's had in a long time. I can look at the history um, when, when we get through this game, but I I think you have to go back to the first year that I played this game uh, seven seasons ago when UAB last had a winning record. Uh, so we we lose here, 79-62. Old Dominion, that's their 20th win. They're probably going to be tough in the tournament, probably going to be one of those favorites to come out of this conference into the, um, into the Final Four tournament. So... You know, they out-rebounded us, definitely outshot us. We didn't 
have much foul trouble. Uh, but man, look at that 28 26 in the paint. We haven't seen that too much this year. Horton had a good game 17 points, four rebounds. Harris, of course, not much from him. Martin off the bench was, I'm pretty sure he was hampered by that injury. Uh, Wilson looked good off the bench, shooting guard, 13 points. Might be in the mix next year if he develops uh, based on his playtime. McCleary, once again, he was he was kind of shut down. Um, after having a, a pretty good showing here, uh, like f when I made him a starter, he had a few good games in there, but he's, he's looked a little rough. Uh, against Old Dominion, he got in foul trouble, never really got on track. And I wanted to to just look at the history, just to, um, and it's going to be see, season recap. So, you know, this 14 wins, or the 15 wins that we have right now, that's the most this team has won since 2019, and we're in 2026, uh, the 26-27 season. So... I don't think they can be too upset with me in terms of the, the athletic director and, and the board. But let's go ahead and finish out the season. You know, this would be this would be key in so many ways because we could finish five hundred in conference. Again, finish sixteen wins. I think it would give us a padded one loss record. Uh, we would I think be guaranteed to finish about five hundred for the season. All right, and, and Western Kentucky struggled down the stretch. I think early in the season they were a little bit better shape. But right now, 6-11 and 11 in conference, I know that they're probably going to – they're wanting to go out strong. Um, Texas El Paso is actually ranked. They're 25th in the country. So that's kind of interesting. But let's go ahead and see how this one ends up. Yes, big win, 72 55. So we did turn it around uh, down the stretch. Finished 500 in conference, 16 and 13. This was what I would have loved to have seen last year, but um, I got to feel pretty good about it with the way we, we tanked starting out in conference there. So what was it, the third or fourth? Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming already we, we did good defensively, and we did 22 of 64. They were horrendous from the free throw line, 2 of 9. We out-rebounded them 43 to 27. That's huge. Horton, once again, player of the game. He, I'm willing to bet he's, yeah, 19 times he's been player of the game. I just hope, you know, I hope his ratings, I hope he's at 4 current ability next year he should be um, with with what he's done in the two years that I've been with this program um, and I like the fact that you know giving giving him those more minutes this year didn't didn't really impact this game either so outside of him Harris four points uh, seven rebounds why good game 14 points nine rebounds he, you know he's another one Two guys double digits in points. That's pretty good. Um, McCleary, you know, not too bad. I have to say, after, you know, considering he's a true freshman, um, he was definitely, I think, a better choice over Rose there towards the end. And then Martin, plus 13, uh, but I'm probably going to leave, leave him – where he's at in the, in the depth chart until we get through this conference tournament anyway. Wilson looked good off the bench in the last few games, so he was double digits in points a couple times. Again, depends on how he 
de- develops ratings wise, he might be in the mix next year for shooting guard. Uh, I think that's the next level for this team. I think um, we add some good outside play to to what we've already got going with Horton and why inside and 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 Matthews and um, Daniels even off the bench. Uh, Daniels, who was the center who started most games last year. I think we can be more competitive. I, I, I feel like we can even get even better. I think 20 wins is probably not off the uh, off the record. We've got no players declaring for the draft. We're going to be playing Middle Tennessee in the conference tournament. Um, Standings-wise, we finish not high enough to, to get a bye. Uh, but that Middle Tennessee, that might be a pretty decent – Opening, opening round game, but look at UTEP dominated this year, sixteen and two in conference, twenty five and four. Old Dominion, Dominion though finished strong, eight win, eight game win streak. Uh, they're going to be tough, I think, to to beat. They they won the tournament outright last year. Um, polls and media, take a look at that real quick. So at Kansas, Butler undefeated and ranked second. Brigham Young third. Again, this could one of these years they're gonna they're gonna win it all. Um, they're consistently at the top year after year. And then you see uh, Texas El Paso down here. Um, Bubble Watch. I think Old Dominion might still be on the bubble. Yeah, they're third, so they've got a good chance at uh, at making the the tournament still, whether they win the Conference USA tournament or not. Outside of them, though, I don't see any other. Uh, I'm not seeing any other Conference USA teams, but that was one of those things that I felt was a step up when I went from went to this conference. I still think it's a little bit of a step up from the OVC because potentially two teams could come from this conference into the final four tournament. Wasn't seeing that at all uh, with the OVC, but while we're, while we're, while we're thinking about that, um, why don't I look at, I'm going to look at the standings for the OVC and big 10, just to see how some of these, uh, my old teams finished up. Penn State, ten and twenty, seven and thirteen in conference. And this was looks to be like an off year for the Big Ten. Just two ranked teams, a lot of teams, you know, kind of bunched up here in the middle. Seven wins in conference is pretty good for Penn State. And then OVC, uh, Austin P. They they've kind of taken a dive too. They're not the team they were when I had them. So now, last thing I'll do before we move on from this um, episode, close it out, I'm going to take a look at the tournament matchups that we're going to have in that Conference USA. So we are going to go up against Middle Tennessee and then Southern Miss. So that's um, could be worse. I mean, it, it definitely could be worse. Um, if we somehow can get past Middle Tennessee, we have beaten Southern Miss. We just came off a pretty convincing win against them. And then Old Dominion, I mean, that would be tough. It would be tough at that point to get past. But, I mean, can I even hope? that this could, could happen. But if I were somehow to win two games in this tournament, um, again, that's going to give me 18 wins. I mean, would the NIT be out of the question? It's possible. I mean, I think, I think we could at least be looking at one of the other two postseason tournaments as a possibility. But I, you know... I 
The goal is to make the NIT. Don't finish last. Finish above 500. It's but those would be those would be big achievements if if we could do this. But we'll have to see that next episode. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. I hope you're enjoying the uh, the series. I'm I'm really enjoying this one more probably than the previous two. And I will see you next episode.